mute my microphone. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It is Thursday, October 7th. And if you're here with us live tonight, that's great. If you're catching this on a replay, that's great also. We are here tonight to talk about an intro to the FOCUS system, uh, a new program that I've developed to help people figure out where to start with their pictures and how to do it right the first time so we're not repeating and restarting our photo organizing projects. So a couple housekeeping issues. Um, we are live on YouTube as well as Facebook. So if you want to comment, you can certainly put a, a comment below on YouTube and I think to the side on Facebook. And I'll try to reply to those. I will probably save questions till the end just so that I can go through our program here and get through it before answering questions. I also will paste a couple links in the comments section that might be helpful through the program. So I hope you'll bear with me for that. Now, tonight, I'm going to just share the PowerPoint presentation here. Whoops, that's not exactly, there we go. Let's just remove you. All right, so this is an intro to the focus system. And this has come about because I have been doing market research for photo organizing and the challenges that consumers have with managing their pictures, both printed as well as digital. So it's uh, also building upon eight years of running Pixology here and helping people with their photo projects over time. I have seen the challenges that people have with technology as well as managing the old boxes and bins of the old stuff that you can see in the background there. So there's a lot that has gone into this and I'm really hopeful that this program I give to you tonight gives you the roadmap to thinking about how to organize your pictures. Now it is a compressed representation of what is all included in the focus system. But for those of you who just need to know where to start and how to do it right, I think it will get you on the way. And for those of you who might be needing more, more information, more help, more um, cheering and that sort of thing, I will be starting an eight week course next week, Thursday. And I'll have um, a link where you can learn more information about that at the end of this. So with all of that being said, I'm so grateful that you guys are joining me here, whether it's tonight or on the replay. Definitely say hi if you're here and it's always nice to know who is watching. And let's let's get started, okay? So I'm going to put this completely up here. And I just want to let you know that um, I, I do consider myself a photo estate planner. And that means I help people save their pictures for today to enjoy, as well as to pass on to future generations. And I hear that a lot. People need help with preserving their pictures so that the stories and the who is who are passed on. So common challenges that I've heard over the years and especially in the last few weeks of my um, market research, people don't know where to start. They're overwhelmed. They want to do it right. Some of us wonder, will anyone care? And if any of these are resonating with you, put a comment there. Or if I haven't covered something that's challenging you, that would be great to know. Then some people are worried about throwing photos away. It's hard to throw pictures away. Some people are worried about wasting time. And I've heard how you can be sitting there working with your pictures on a, you know, maybe even a family genealogy project. And whether it's your pictures or those old naturalization documents, whatever, five hours can go by and you haven't accomplished a whole lot. Technology is challenging for people, and I totally get that. We have so much technology coming at us every day. We have no ability to keep up with it. And I've also heard that people have no plan. <laughs> 
And I see Sharon <laughs> mentions it's all of the above, what you just said. And, and there's a tear next to that smiling emoji. <laughs> Let me just show that. Yes, it is um, so much. It's like no wonder people have, um, have a challenge keeping up with their pictures. So it's taking a special approach. I think to get through this. Now we've been saying it's a journey. It is a journey to organize your photos, but my gosh, we don't want it to take a decade, right? So we need to focus to get it done. Focus. It's the perfect word when you think about photos and cameras. You want to hone in on that which is important, right? So I have taken the word focus and I've broken it down into an acronym. Now it's not a perfect, you know, with the verbs all matching up, but the acronym is this. We need to find it all. And then we want to organize it. That's the O. C is for curate. U is to make it usable. And S is to save it and share it. Okay, so we have to have a special, special mindset. And I am just going to tell you, <laughs> I'm coming on the screen to tell you, you've got to focus. You have to figure out what that is in your brain to help keep you motivated and moving. You need to follow the plan. And even if my plan here that I present to you tonight isn't what you do, you need to modify it and follow it, stick to it. Do not go down any rabbit holes. And I'll point out a few areas that are potentials for rabbit holes when we get there. You also want to, you know, I put immediate rewards there. And I put it there because one of my clients said, there is no immediate rewards with organizing photos. Like sometimes it feels like a long slog to get through all of the pictures, whether they're printed or digital. And I'm hoping that in my system, we have a couple immediate rewards where we hit some milestones that are motivating and keep us going. And then the last point here is be clinical and efficient. This is no time for sentiment and emotion. And I know photos can evoke a lot of emotion, um, but we have to set that aside and be clinical and efficient. It's easy for us here at Pixology because we're working with other people's photos. And I'll show you a couple examples of how quickly we can get things done because we're able to set that aside. And the other thing that I don't have a bullet point on here that I do want to mention is the idea, will anybody care? And I think if you care, that's the most important thing. There will be people down the line in future generations who will appreciate your work, even if the, the sister or brother in your family or even the children don't seem to really appreciate the work you're putting into preserving the family photo collection, it will come. I mean, I think about slideshows, you know, when we used to project them up on the walls, we do that once a year, maybe once every three or four years. And we loved it that one time a year, right? So if this isn't something that people may necessarily gush over what you've done, but you will be immensely proud of it when you get to where you want to be. So that is really important. The whole mindset, you are doing this for you because you care about it. All right. Now, here's where we're going to start with the actual acronym. And we're going to split it up into digital photos and printed photos. Because, and I'm going to come on screen for this completely. Printed photos and digital photos have two different, you know, tasks associated with each of them. All right. But the end goal is to bring them all to one place. And so as I thought about making a program, 
I felt that I needed to include both printed and digital. So even if you have more of a concern in one area over the other, I think this will be beneficial and it might help someone that you know too. So we are going to start with digital photos, the digital photo side. All right. And in the FOCUS acronym, the F comes first, and that means find it all. And I recognize I'm glossing over this, and it's more than just saying, oh, we can find it all. Uh, it might take time, but if you can get your computers, the old computers and the hard drives and the USB drives, the discs, the CDs of photos, you've got to get those uh, those CDs onto your computer because CDs are dying now today too. And camera cards, especially your online photos need to come down to your computer. And in this class, I teach organizing your pictures on your computer. So I'm curious if you are not using a computer, if you just use a tablet, put that in the comments uh, because that requires a little bit of a different approach. All right, so your digital pictures, find it all, okay? And we're gonna organize it in folders on your computer, okay? So whether you're using a PC or a Mac, my program is gonna cover both uh, scenarios, okay? Whether you're using a PC or a Mac, you wanna create a master folder on your desktop, okay? This is the one place you're gonna bring your pictures to while you're working on organizing them, okay? So you copy the folders into the master file. Now, once you're in that folder, you want to name your folders with this formula that I have here. It's year, 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 dash, month, month, dash, date, date, description. So what does that look like? All right. On the screen here, I have on the left side, this is a screenshot from Mac Finder. And on the right side is a screenshot from the Windows PC File Explorer. All right. And you can see I have put the year first in uh, most of the cases. And then I put the month if, I, if it's relevant. And if I had an event that was on a specific date, let's just say we had um, like July 4th in, in 2016, and we did all these things in July 4th, I could make a folder that was 2016-07-04 for July 4th pictures only. The important thing is to Put the year first and then month and date if it's relevant and then a description. Now, I left two folders on the left hand side here, Easter photos and Thanksgiving memories. Just as an example, you may have some larger categories of photos that you want to keep separate from your, your digital photos, you know, chronological organization. It could be career photos. It could be, uh, I, sometimes I have people who want vacation photos to be separate. And it could be family groups. If you're dealing with inherited photos, you may have family groups of photos. And you can see, you know, when you use the year, those alphabet, alphabetize um, in front of the named folders or above it. Okay, so this is alphabetically organized and the years come first. So as you add folders to your master folder, things will start filling in and, and looking good. All right. All right. So that's the naming of folders. I do not name individual pictures. And this is because that's a rabbit hole. If you start naming individual pictures, that will slow you down considerably. There is another place for working with your pictures, and it's not in this organization time, okay? All right, so next, we are into the C. All right, we're, I'm assuming big time that, all right, you've got all of your photos into folders in your master file on your desktop. Now, we want to curate them. And with digital pictures, the best thing that you can do to curate is to get rid of the duplicates. 
Now you could compare the folders, you know, as, as you start bringing them together, you probably will find that you have multiple copies of folders because it's just natural. Over the years, we have accumulated so many devices and folders and we've backed up our phone to our computer and sometimes people have six duplicates. You cannot do that manually. You need to get a duplicate finder program. On the Mac, it's called Photo Sweeper. $10, it's an amazing program. On a PC, it's the duplicate photo cleaner, all right? So the reason why I have you working with folders on the PC and the Mac, for you Mac users, the Photos app is powerful. However, getting rid of duplicates is harder in there. So for that's one of many reasons why I like this folder structure. When you have that one master folder on your desktop, using the duplicate finder is pretty easy. You just import that folder to the duplicate finder program and you run the duplicate finder. And it's, it's great because it will find the duplicates and tell you which folders they're in. So you can make a decision on which folders to delete. You also can go a little nutty with the duplicate photo finder programs because you can set the matching level. So you could set it to 75% matching and, and it'll bring up similar photos. But don't do that. That's a rabbit hole that will take you away from your main core work of just curating and getting the digital photos organized and ready for the next step. All right. Now, when I just go back here, we do want to talk about digital photo goals, all right? The repetitives there, remember, I just said that's a rabbit hole, so I don't want you to spend a lot of time there. But as you think about digital photo goals, how many do you want, right? Um, looking backwards, I don't really think it's a good use of time to go back and try to delete pictures if we have so much to do moving forward, okay? So I'd almost rather you spend your time getting rid of the duplicates and then thinking about today, how many pictures are, are you taking moving forward, okay? the I just put in here the folders. You, you don't wanna have a thousand pictures in one folder. Um, so if you have a month, like October, and you have a thousand pictures in there, that's a lot to scroll through. So I just put this as a, a, an example of a goal. Maybe you want to have holders having 25 pictures up to 250 or more, maybe. But this brings kind of a better, a bigger question. How many pictures should you take? All right. So now if you have little kids, this you might take more and and I'm OK with that. But let's be thoughtful about how many pictures we take. And we just start off with an example, a, an idea in one month. If you take 30 photos, that would be 360 pictures a year, which would make a very nice uh, annual photo book, uh, 300. It'd be about 50 pages with six to eight pictures on a page. So that that isn't terrible. And you you want to capture the moments that are important in life and who was there, but not every second and not every gift that was open and not every expression. Even though I know, you know, we, we think we have these digital pictures and we, we can take them so easily and you could get just that right shot. The problem is, is once you've taken those pictures, it's like really hard to delete them. You might, I might want that expression later. Or, you know, I just find that psychologically people have a hard time deleting pictures. It's easier to take fewer photos to start off with, and then you have less to, to worry about. All right. So when you think about pictures 30, taking digital pictures 30 a month, that's manageable. And if it's more, that's fine, but don't let it be a thousand pictures in one month. That's that's unmanageable, okay? So let's go on. So we had, we just talked about the digital photo goals, something to think about, okay? 
once we've got our folders eliminated with the duplicates, and by the way, you can, I have seen people go from 25,000 digital pictures down to 13,000. That's how many duplicates they have. So this curate part is really important to get rid of duplicates, okay? Once we're done with the curating part, we want to have make the pictures usable, all right? And by this, I mean we can find the pictures that we want when we need them, all right? We, want, we have an event coming up. We want to just search on the couple whose anniversary it is and we want to find their pictures. Or it's a graduation. We want to pull out the pictures of the, the child growing up through the years and make a photo book. We want to be able to use it. Or we're trying to find pictures of the great grandparents that we know are somewhere. We, we have to be able to find them. Usable is really important. And working with pictures in folders is hard. It's not fun to be opening folders and looking at pictures. That's why photo management software can really help make this be enjoyable. And I have talked about this in many other um, videos about having one digital home. Okay, so that's on the YouTube channel. And I've reviewed a whole bunch of photo management software programs. When you import your pictures into a photo management software, you can work with the photos metadata. And that's, that's where we tell the stories, the who's who. And we can change the dates and, uh, and make things correct. And that digital information is what is needed to be passed on along with the picture to future generations. So I'm going to just go to the next slide here and show you, this is just a handful of programs that are out there. And there's a lot to look at. You want to make sure you choose a program that you like using it because I totally recommend that you use it routinely, you know, at least monthly, if not weekly, so you remember how to use it and you keep up with the new pictures you're adding. If I narrow it down, these are the four that I've seen most often. Um, the top left, that is the Apple Photos app for Mac users. And I do, um, I do think it's a powerful program. I like using it. However, to pass pictures on to the next generation is tricky. And I'll talk about that in the next slide. Amazon Photos is popular because any Prime member has a huge amount of storage space um, included. And uh, the one below it, for those of you Android users, that's Google Photos. That also um, is widely used because it's the backup system for Android phones. And then the Milio program is the go-to program I recommend for people who are going to use their program routinely. There are, there are some things to get used to using it, okay? And I love it. And it has a great way of displaying your pictures. And if you want to see more about Milio, there is a review on the YouTube channel for that. Now, what we really want to make sure is the metadata that we put hard work in in preserving the pictures is retained and saved. So I want to explain a little bit about what metadata is. This is the information, the digital information that is tied to your picture, OK? And I am showing you a few different examples of how metadata is displayed in various software programs, OK? Every one of them is different, and it's really frustrating, I, I will admit. Um, in Apple Photos, when you click Command I, that's Get Info, you can see I have um, the, t the name of the picture in that info box. It's image 529. The date it was taken, what took it, it's got a, a me in it, and I put a description. It was an archery competition. And I could assign a location. That's the metadata for this picture. And Apple Photos does allow you to edit it. 
Another example of metadata is here in Google Photos. Here you can see on the top right, I have entered Hannah's graduation. Google has done some facial recognition, although I haven't added her. And then I can edit the date. Um, this is a description. And that's, that's all well and good. But when I download this photo, that metadata isn't saved. And that's a huge problem. So if you're working in Google Photos thinking that you're saving you know, the work you've done, that's not the case. All right. Then we're going to move here to Mylio. This is an example of seeing the metadata in Mylio. All right, I have the info tab on the right hand side, same information about when it was taken, um, the date, which I edited because clearly we did not have digital pictures in 1993 that I had access to. And I added a description. I did not change the name of the picture. I rarely do that because um, I have other things I need to do with my photos. There's keywords and people. Mylio has a lot of functionality. In order to give this picture to someone else with the metadata attached, I have to export it from Mylio. So it's just food for thought here, the different ways that metadata is um, edited and saved and passed on. Then the last option that I'm showing you is forever. This is online, it's in cloud storage, and their metadata it kind of is similarly located here. We have the date taken, which I could edit. I can add tags and I can edit the description and things like that. So that's how the metadata is handled differently in each of the programs. If I had to tell you what I would do, what I would recommend, um, PC users, Mylio is great for editing pictures. I and mean, we haven't even talked about saving, um, you, you know, cropping pictures and things like that. Mylio is great for that kind of thing. And adding the metadata and organizing, it's a lot of fun. So PC users, I would work with Mylio. Mylio is a program that is installed on your computer. Then I use forever as the, the second stage to preserve my pictures and pass on to future generations. So we're going to talk about that next. All right. Mylio works very nicely on a Mac as well. And the Mac users could choose between that or the Photos app for their one digital home. Remember, I, I'm just gonna go back here. You need to have one digital home. Some people might just choose the folders, right? That we created in the master folder. Other people might wanna have the program on their computer and some might choose a, a cloud storage. You just have to be aware of what you get. So now let's talk about the S in focus. All right, save and share. This is where we make photo books, slideshows, and gifts for people, and more, all right? And saving and sharing those. Once they're in the folders or they're in your, in your photo management software, you could get them to a photo book site and order, order, order photo books and gifts. You do want to make sure that people have access, right? Um, if something happens to you, how will people have how will they have access to their pictures, your pictures? And I had a gentleman who called me just a week ago who, whose wife tragically died, not much um, older than me. And he was locked out of her iPhone and he uses an Android. And Apple told him he would need a court order to get access to her pictures. And there's just passwords and then there's these uh, two-factor two authentication where you get texted a uh, code and your family can be locked out and it can be a real headache. So we want to future-proof your collection and that's where Forever comes in as a solution that we use here a lot at Pixology. We 
people upload their pictures to forever and then they actually can create photo books and get prints there and then the company guarantees to migrate your pictures and film or video and documents to the newest technology for your lifetime plus a hundred years so it's just a quick introduction to forever okay so that is the focus system for the digital side of your pictures now we have to uh, dive in to the printed photos all right because they're they're connected often you have scanned pictures in in your computer that that um are part of your collection already so so let's move on to the printed photos and this is where we start with the f again and it's find it all in the bins envelopes drawers shelves under the bed hopefully not in the basement gather your albums and scrapbooks bring it all to one location you will need tools like large bins for sorting uh, post-it notes are helpful index cards and i like black sharpie markers it helps me organize and you're going to bring it all to one location this is one of those areas for immediate rewards when you bring it all to one location you can feel really good about accomplishing that okay so once it's all in one location we're going to organize it we're going to organize these pictures chronologically i have had people tell me that they would prefer to organize by family member and that's that's okay for a time but if you remember we made all of our folders with years on it and that's just a system it's chronological the other problem is is if you have more than one child or more than two let's say you have three children and you're going to do it by child well what about the pictures that have two kids in it or the pictures that have three of the kids in it how do you split those up it's it's um nearly impossible i actually did have a client um who for a while in the 1990s she made an album for each child and had literally three copies of each picture made to make an album for each child it's a mess for her now because they weren't finished and you know how do you go back and correct something like that all right so it's chronological all right we do up to three sorts okay the first is an inventory first inventory and sort and in this stage you're going to move fast and you are going to sort by decade all right in the decade mode you're just putting you know the pictures in the approximate decade if you have a mixed bin of of quite a few decades you're not spending the time splitting those up yet you're going to put those in to be sorted all right and you may have some larger categories that you don't want to chronologically order like career i mentioned that before or you might have uh, up north I might have mentioned that one before or military service and I can see setting those aside those are big categories that you might also have memorabilia so but don't have a lot of them okay and when you're sorting by decade if you are one of the lucky people who have heritage pictures those old vintage photos you could make a, a, a bin for heritage photos all right maybe it's the 1900s up to the 1940s and there usually aren't as many of those so that is um that's something that you could think about now um that's the first inventory and sort now as you're searching through all of that you're probably going to find slides negatives film or videos or who knows what i mean we have found some pretty wild things when we've been sorting old bins of photos all right so if it slides they go in their own box negatives we set aside and if we're missing something crucial then we'll go and get those negatives later and we also put film and video aside those are handled separately okay so that's the first inventory and sort 
Then the second sort is taken, and by the way, sorting those decades out that it first inventory and sort shouldn't take you more than a day or two. Um, and that might sound like impossible, but it, it, it really shouldn't take you more than a day or two. Your job is to divide things up into these large categories, and, and we don't want you to take long on that. The second sort will take longer. This is where we take each decade and divide them up by year. We have found that we are usually able to date three quarters of the photos by year or decade. And then we might have sections that are just undated 60s, undated 80s, whatnot. So let me show you what this looks like. All right. This is um, a large amount of pictures, large, all right? It filled a, a conference room table. There's a lot of bins and there's a lot of mixed media. I didn't even include what's under the table on this, all right? And we sorted through all of that. It took two of us and we were done in, in two and a half hours. And, I'm, and that's why I say you could get through this in a day. <laughs> And uh, I'm confident if you put the right mindset on that you can accomplish this because you go from this to this, all right? Do you see how much better this looks just by taking and putting the negatives together? Hopefully you can see this, I'll make it bigger. You can see the negatives, the VHS tapes, there's film, they all have their own bin. Memorabilia is on the bottom. There's heritage here. Back here are the slides, and I've got 50s, I think that's 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and frames. Here's the bin of unknown. Now, when you have taken and divided things up by large category, if you don't have a lot of space, you can see how you could put these bins stacked away and just pull one out and work on it one at a time, all right? This is our old studio, by the way. We had a wall of photos there. Um, I just want you to take a look at that. This is so much more manageable to look at than this, right? Okay, so this is that first sort in inventory done in what would be four to five hours if just one of us had done it. Then we take each of those big bins and we break it down by year, all right? And this is, this is in progress, all right? So it's not perfect looking, but I wanted to show you that it's in progress. So we have these nice blue labels for the decades, and then we have the green labels for the years as we're starting to break things down and take them out of the photo albums, okay? And then that takes us to this picture where we now have the pictures just in photo boxes with the decade and the years. And then the orange slips are like the specialty, you know, trap that was a special trip, that kind of thing. Here is this 1980s to be determined TBD in the middle of the picture. You know, you're going to have sections of photos that you just can't necessarily know all of the details about, okay? And we got to let go of being perfect on this. I also want to point out, if you look in the back here, the back table, there's it looks there's a video camera that's just propped in there holding the pictures up. Those are all duplicates that we found, all right? Duplicate photos get set aside or thrown away right away. And you could also throw away any picture you feel comfortable with immediately if you can do it just like snapping your fingers, throwing it away. And there's a lot of travel scenes or there's just landscapes that can be let go. So I don't want you to be laboring over deciding about throwing a picture away. But if you know right off the bat you don't need it, toss it, okay? And by the way, photos can be recycled, especially the ones, oh, our phone is ringing here. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right, <laughs> it's, at, it's after hours, you think, um, um, who knows who that is? Anyway, that'll ring just another minute or two. So 
I was talking about duplicates and repetitive pictures, and now um, I did lose my train of thought there. So anyway, um, think about, you know, oh, recycling, recycling. All right. The current pictures with the modern printing processes can be recycled. Just throw them in your paper bin and recycle them. Any photo that was processed with chemicals, um, you, you can almost tell because there's like a, sh uh, a film over the top of them. That the cracking that you see in some of the older pictures, those cannot be recycled. But throw away the ones that you can um, right away. Don't want to think a lot about it, okay? Now, we are still looking at organizing. I have this third sort in the curate part of our acronym, okay? Oh, Karen, I'm going to show this comment. Permission. Sometimes that's all we need in decluttering. Well, <laughs> Karen, do you mean permission to let something go that it's okay or from another family member? I try to let people know you let go because um, it, it, it let go. There is too much stuff that we have left. And if I just go back into the, the you know, what was in this picture here, can you imagine how much room that took up in her house? We really need to give ourselves permission to throw things away. In this collection, I we removed pictures from albums and most of the albums were garbage, but some of them were in good enough shape because not many people actually look through their pictures over and over. The newer ones we did donate to Goodwill but you've got to let go all right because um if that's a challenge we have to go back to the mindset and remember we have to be clinical and efficient about this it's it's time to let it go because um it, it weighs on us i heard that a lot actually in my market research it was a weight on my shoulders and those piles sitting around are really, I don't want to say demoralizing, but it's it's a heavy burden. Someone mentioned it was a heavy burden. I was at a client's house last week. She had photo albums. She had 50 of them. Uh, someday, maybe I'll share the photo of all of that fitting in the back of my car. But she had them in her laundry closet, in the spare bedroom closet, in her bedroom drawers, in the storage locker downstairs, and then a whole bunch of them stacked along the kitchen floor um, in, in, in her, her condo. And that was a lot. So when we moved it out, her, her, her home just visibly felt better to her. So anyway, permission is given by me if, if that helps. Thanks, Karen, for mentioning that. So let's go back to um, the third sort. For some years, it is helpful to organize them by month. And I know that probably sounds hideous. It takes us twice as long to organize by month as it does by year. So that's where things get time consuming. But these little green dividers all say things like 2013-08. So that's, you know, August 2013 pictures. And um, when a year has a thousand pictures in there, that's a lot to have in a folder, remember? So dividing them up by month or at least by holiday, your birthdays and, you know, the, the summer holidays, things like that. You can put it in a sensical order, okay? So um, this curate stage is really, you know, about getting things in further in order. And when you organize by month, it is much easier to see the duplicates as well as um, bringing groups of pictures back together. I can't tell you how many times I have thought when I see a, a bunch of pictures, it's like people literally shuffle them. Over the years, they grabbed a group from here and a, they grabbed some from over there and they used them for an event and they're so mixed up. So when you organize by month, Sometimes you actually see, you know, a holiday gathering come back together and, and you have all, all the photos. So it's kind of interesting. 
All right. Then um, we go from C to the U, making this usable. So we're going to talk about scanning options. And then once the photos are scanned, you want to run the duplicate finder on your scanned photos because inevitably, if you have lots, you'll have pictures that you have in two different years, and that might help you narrow it down. So you're gonna to wanna to run the duplicate finder. And then you import or copy them to the one digital home that you have. I'm also, I'm gonna talk about scanning options and then we'll talk briefly about other media types. All right, so now we are on the scanning options. The top left here, that is flatbed scanning, and that is horribly long, okay? And, and you want to make sure you're doing it right. So make sure that you're scanning at 600 dots per inch and you're saving as JPEGs, unless you will be editing the pictures a lot, then you may want to save them as TIFFs. Flatbed scanning, 4,000 pictures will take forever. So this option to the right, the easy photo scan, rent a scanner is an option for you. You can look them up online. It's a high speed scanner. And then uh, you can rent it for a week. And then you have the Epson Fast Photo 680. That's a consumer grade scanner. And, and we have one here, we like it. Um, it's It's, it's a little more, it's harder to use than the easy photo scan. But um, if you're technology competent, you might be able to save yourself quite a bit of money um, scanning your own pictures with that. We here do scan photos for people. We've had people um, bring pictures in and we've had people ship them to us where we digitize most anything that can be needed. So that's an option as well. All right, so scanning those pictures um, is your next step. And then you might have other media types. Remember I talked about slides and negatives. A consumer option is the Wolverine scanner, which I have here, it's scanning slides. It can also do negatives. Your film, video, and audio, you most likely will have to find a provider for it. Um, we do it here and there's there's places in most cities that do the work. Um, you can also ship it off to companies as well. If you have memorabilia and documents, those can be scanned as well. And you may be able to do that with your flatbed scanner. So that's just quickly touching upon the other media types. So we kind of come to the S for printed photos and we're back where we were with the digital photos. We've imported them into our one digital home. Now we can make photo books and more. We wanna make sure there's access for family and we have um, future-proofed our collection, okay? So at this point, um, I haven't seen any questions yet. So either you're completely overwhelmed or this all makes wonderful sense or you're somewhere in between. So if you um, have any questions, you can list them here below. I'm gonna put in uh, a couple links here for you because the One Digital Home is really something that has, um, you know, uh, has to be considered. Where are you going to store them? So I am just going to get that that list up here, and I'm also posting my um, a link for you to schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with me to learn more about our uh, actual eight-week class that we're starting next week. So. Um, I see Karen has a question here. She has, um, her mother-in-law had old bubble frame pictures. What do I do with them? And they're still on the farm in Wisconsin. Bubble frame pictures are um, unbelievable. They're, they're, they were made with a special process and they, um, they're hard to photograph. Uh, sometimes they're in varying condition. The important thing is to, 
to scan it if possible. So we've had people bring in digital, or excuse me, we've had people bring in the photo frames here. We will remove it from the frame. Usually that involves pulling the nails out. And then um, we'll try scanning it on our flatbed. We have an oversized one. And then uh, uh, return it to the frame of our client once. It, you know, there's, that's a personal decision. I've seen people actually have frames restored and they're now hanging back up in the house. And I think that is kind of a nice thing to do, you know, make sure the photo is scanned. And uh, if scanning it isn't possible, we, you know, maybe it's stuck to the glass for whatever reason, something got wet and it's stuck. We will actually, um, prop it up and use a, a high quality camera to take a picture of it. And, you know, it, that is a, um, uh, you know, one way to try to get the picture. So the question, you know, what do you do with them? If literally I've had people who didn't want them back and then we'll hold on to them here. Uh, so occasionally we've had someone who's been looking for a frame and the, you it could be donated to Goodwill. I think there are some crafty people who like to to work with that. So there, those are some options. Um, I always think the most important thing is to get it scanned and then saved. So hopefully that gives you a couple ideas. Uh, and as being your mother-in-law's, you know, on your your husband's side, I'm not sure um, if there's no one else that wants them. You can feel okay about throwing them away after they're scanned. <laughs> Um, and if you really don't feel okay, there are archival boxes that um, you could purchase to store them in. Yeah, I, 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 I think that's going to be a call on your part. But you should know, we've had over eight years, I probably have had half a dozen people who didn't want them back. And, and that's okay. All right. Do we have any other questions? Okay, so I've posted the Calendly link and um, totally, oh, okay, so she's got, Karen says they're really large. If they're that that cumbersome, I, I would feel okay about having them scanned. And then um, you could even have reprints made for the pictures and, and send each of the family an eight by 10 version of it. We've done that too. So you can let those go um, and it's, it's okay. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Um, here is, if you need more, like, you know, I, I covered this topic very quick. In fact, I used to teach printed and digital photo organization in one uh, two hour class at our local college. And I never saw those people again. So then I thought, all right, I'm going to do it in two classes. And uh, what we put together here is really a fast plan. All right. If you want to have eight week course on it where we deep dive and I have the tools that we use here at Pixology to share with people, um, you might want to learn about our eight week course. And I'd be happy to talk with you and learn about your situation. You can just go to calendly.com backslash Molly B and schedule a time. Our course starts next Thursday and uh, we, we're really looking forward to working with each other. Um, it won't be a large group, but it will be really impactful and getting this stuff done before the holidays. Then the last thing that I have to share with you is um, just links for a couple discount codes um, for my Leo. Uh, you can use a coupon code PIXMILEO, and I'm just putting it in here in the comments here for you. Use the coupon code PIXMILEO for 25% off the first year. And then forever, if you want to try that out, it's two gigabyte free account, holds up to 500 photos, and it gets you a $20 coupon to use. I'll put the link in, in the comments for that. So I don't see any other questions, but I am here for you if you want to, you know, leave a, a comment after the fact, and I will be happy to answer them. 
And I really appreciate all of you joining. It's so important that we save these pictures and the stories because I just watch our society today and the kids who are having troubles in school. And then, and there are a lot of troubles in schools. I, um, I, I've heard it from a principal neighbor and I have uh, my own son who is a, a sophomore. And kids these days don't know the history of their families. They don't know what life was like back, certainly in the 40s and 30s, you know, during the Great Depression. And they don't know what it was like in the 70s and 80s. Like when I grew up and we had no electronics, it was the swing set outside and our dolls and stuffed animals. So our stories are being lost. And today's a day to get something done with your pictures. And I hope that this was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up or a like and, and share it. And that's it for now. I hope you guys all have a great rest of the day or evening whenever you watch this. And we'll see you again, okay? All right. Take care. Bye-bye.